What's up, everyone? It's another episode of A Slice of Love. Of course, is your host, as always, Chris Holmes. And today I have a great guest with me by the name of... Valerie Johnson-Reed. All right, cool, cool. So we're going to have fun with this. Like I said, this is casual and laid back. You may he see me literally eat sandwiches in the middle of this podcast. I'm like my other <laughs> one. I'm being, I'm being dead serious. I was, I was hungry. Just being completely honest. Hey, I understand. <laughs> but um, I want to like hit on this topic because I feel like this is going to be fun is tell about like the dating. I'm going to keep it broad right now. I'm going to dig deeper, but the dating, uh, let's see, as you get older. Oh, say. wow. So we're going to have That's fun funny. with that. Like, what's the challenges, the funds, the differences, and things like that? We're just going to let yeah. it go, rip, and, like, your interest in young guys, the old guys, you know, all that, you know, just going to dig into it. So okay. we're going to just start. Was, like, how, do you, how do you feel starting off with this, though? How do I feel about this topic? Yep. And then we're going to dig about, like, your experiences. <laughs> oh, I think the topic is very uh, – very timely, and I think it's very uh, appropriate because, yeah, I, I'm at that point in life. I'm 50, so I look at life and relationships a little, probably a little bit differently than I have before. Cool, cool, cool. So, like, how how are you looking at it differently uh, from the previous well, to now? Okay, so I was married before. Um, I was married 15 years. My husband passed away. So the whole dating scene is a lot different than what it was when I was dating as a younger person, even before I got married, even while I was married, life was a lot different, um, being that it is as it is now. So fast forward to dating after being married, uh, it's a lot different. It's just it's different in the sense where the world is different and expectations are different. Terminology is different. <laughs> Wait, well, just, you keep saying like different terminology. I want you to just be straight up front. Like, what is this? I'm going to tell you what the difference what I find to be really intriguing and just crazy is that so many people, because I, the way I learned about dating as far as I learned it was when you're dating, when you're going out with this person. Okay, back during that time, it was one person. It wasn't five people. Well, now, when people say, are you dating? They're not talking about, are you dating one person? They're, they're looking at dating as, okay, are you going out on dates with these five other people? A relationship, this is what I was told, a relationship is you're dating one person. So I had to learn that because I wasn't white. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, I feel like we're similar to on that because, well, my grandparents basically said, like, all right, you and all this puppy love, just get make sure you get your runnings out until you get older, buddy. So whatever you do in your little dating pool and all that, it ain't mm-hmm. real until you get married. That's okay. what I heard from my grandparents. Okay. So there was like, instead of you just like, you too young for that, too young for that. So like, I'm hearing like your side of the story. So, but like, what are some like the challenges? Is that um, I find that a lot of men my age, and I'm going to say their 40s, 50s-ish, they are very still very much into playing. Um, they don't appear to be, they say, okay, I'm serious. I'm going to settle down. I want to do this. I want to do that. But Papa when, was a rolling stone. But when it actually comes <laughs> down to it, do, I, do they really? No, not, not really. It doesn't appear that they really want to. So that's a challenge because for me, I'm a person of my word. So if you, if I tell you, hey, Chris, I'm going to meet you at this restaurant at five o'clock so we can finish working on whatever project. I mean that. And then if I don't show up, I'm going to text you in advance. Or if I'm late, it's because something happened to cause me to be late. People now 
seem to um, take their word not, they don't take their word seriously. So they'll say, they'll, they'll say anything and then it's kind of like, oh my God, that person is not a person of their word. So that's a, that's a challenge for me because I'm, I'm a person of my word. So if I don't come through on something, there's a reason why and I'm going to let you know in advance. So that's how I feel, be a person of your word. So you feel like nowadays people on BS just like to say it yeah. and don't really own up to it. Yeah. Sure. And then, and as far as men go, it's just like, why lie? I mean, we're we're wrong. We're we're good and good. so you don't have to lie about your life or your situation. You don't have to say stuff to try to be oh well, oh you're this. So let me say like, okay, for instance, just an example. I'll have people that don't read books, and I'll I'll say you know the author I've written three books. I'm not bragging, but just simply saying. And, What's the last book you read? They'll, they'll respond to me. I haven't read any books lately. Okay, for me, that's kind of like a turn off because I mean, you, you can't get no conversation going. It's like, okay, yeah, so we're going to talk. Them. But, I, but I'll still even engage a little bit with you. And I'll say, okay, well, you know, this is a good book for you. You haven't read this book. And I'll even get suggestions, but I don't want you to tell me, okay, yeah, I'm ready to read these books you told me about. And then when I tell you, Okay, well, you can get this book, and it's like, okay, did you pick up your book? And you tell me you want help or you want to read these books, and but then when I ask you about it again, oh no, I haven't thought anything else about it. So to me, it's like you're just doing it just because you think that's what I want to do. Yeah, he's just trying so, to like go ahead and get them points in, you know, like yeah, yeah. I want to get a little attention and things like that. <laughs> yeah, so to me, the genuineness, um, being a person of your word, it just seems to be a challenge. It seems to be a to so many people. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because I feel like, I don't know, this is coming from my personal experience. I feel like it's young and old. I mean, hearing your point mm-hmm. of view because, like, I mean, I'm just from my experience. Like, I, there's been times where I set up things, like, let's meet here and all that. And that time comes and the other person doesn't respond until, like, an hour later, oh, something came up. And I'm like, you could have just said you didn't want to or something like that. So I won't be wasting my time or like, like 15 or 10 minutes later, I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm sorry to let you know this, but my dog is passed. I'm, I'm just making some stuff. Right, right, right. I got you. I <laughs> yeah. Got that you. kind of stuff for, Hey, I got um, you. I'm riding down this highway and I didn't look at the gas tank. And I didn't notice I was on east, almost side of the highway. I had to call my grandparents, so I ain't gonna be able to make it. You know how that kind of spill goes. Okay, but is there like a certain age group of people that's doing this, or is it just overall in general? I mean, honestly, from the people I talked to, like twenty and thirty, like okay, so so that's that's scary to me because it tells me that even as we get older, we don't value well, we don't communicate. Correctly. Yes, <laughs> we don't communicate correctly, and we don't value. We we don't really. We're not people of our word. And I get that emergencies happen. I'm not saying emergencies don't happen. I'm not saying situations don't happen. I do get that. But in my mind, and and I know if I'm interested in somebody, for example, and if I make the effort, if I'm interested in that person, I think we all do technically. For example, and there was a guy that I was supposed to meet um, at the location and everything. But after talking to the guy, I realized he probably wasn't somebody that I wasn't going to really want to engage in conversation with any further or even go to dinner with. I, I don't want to waste anybody's time. And I don't want to wait. You know, I'm not one of those people I'm going to go out on a date with you just, you know, I, I don't, I'm, I'm beyond that in the sense where. If I'm not interested in you, I don't even want to, I don't want to do that. So after a few conversations and talking, after we even scheduled it, I was kind of like the next day, we were supposed to like meet like at six o'clock, maybe for dinner that evening. Well, I did look at my schedule and all the things I had to do that day. Early in the day, I realized it it wasn't going to happen. And then on top of the fact, I really kind of wasn't really interested anymore in going to see him. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to waste his time. I don't want to waste my time. Let me communicate with him now 
And this was probably early in the day. I was supposed to meet him like at six. I realized probably around 11, 12 latest that it probably wasn't going to happen. And I really wasn't that interested in making that happen. So I texted him and I said, I said, I know you're at work, but I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to make it. And he texted back and said, thank you for letting me know ahead of time. And that was it. Have I heard from him? Have I talked to him? No. And I'm okay with that because, like I said, it wasn't that I was truly interested in him anyway. After, after we talked and after the conversation that we had, I was just like, ah. Uh. So I think communication is key. Um, I think, and I was having a conversation with a friend. It's so funny. We're talking about this. I was having a, a conversation with a friend today. We were just talking about how so many people are broken to where when someone is in your faith and they seem to be pretty decent, um, a lot of times if you're broken or you've had a whole bunch of bad experiences, you won't even realize that there's somebody good in front of your face. Oh, you hitting something that, okay. I, <laughs> you hitting on something that. I feel like it is in hitting my time period now because, I mean, that's not just as you get old, that's in young now. Cause like, it, it's just something about like all your past experiences. Mm-hmm. And there's been time where I have probably tried my best to do the dates, you know, send little things, good morning, text, take out the gentleman stuff and all that. Mm-hmm. And because like I could do everything right on my end, but based on that person's experiences, they were either, and mm-hmm. just give me some feedback off of that. They'll be really- like, I don't think I'm ready. I'll say those are like either I'm not ready or they'll say this. And I get this often. It's like, I'm trying to see what's wrong with you. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, help me out. Cause I'm, I want to hear this um, from a woman's point of view. Cause mm-hmm. like I'm hearing this they're in my age. And so I want to hear your point of view. Cause it's either that, or it's like, I'm trying to find some, I'm like, I'm not doing anything wrong to this person right now. I know I'm a human being. And I may make flaws and mistakes, but I learn from them. But it kind of, it, I'm not going to lie, it's a turn off for me when I'm like, you're searching for something to be wrong. Because there's so many people out there, young, old, middle aged, that, and I'm going to say we as people, we have so many underlying issues or previous experiences that have just turned us sour. And so we can have somebody in front of us is like, okay, check, 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 check. We're like, wait a minute. All these ducks in a row, wait a minute, something must be wrong. I personally, I don't live by that code, but I'm going to tell you why I believe some people do. And again, I don't speak for everybody, I speak for myself. Um, I think some people do that because they've had these previous experiences and people who they are for like the first couple months. And then after that, what we like to say, I met your representative. And after I meet your representative, then, oh, this is the real person. Oh. This is really who you are. So I think a lot of times, a lot of women probably, okay, you know, is this really him? Is it too too, too true? But also I think um, for a lot of women, they're so used to being treated a certain type of way, which is is sad to me. But you're so... You you just hit on something really big, and and that does make sense because I, I, I want to hear you out. But yeah, I do understand what you're talking about, like... You, you don't want to get your expectations too high. But at the same time, living like, this is my personal opinion, living like mm-hmm. that, you will miss the person that's probably for you in front of you. Absolutely. Because you, you can't make, you can't carry the garbage from the past and just throw it mm-hmm. onto the next person. Because mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie, one of the biggest turnoffs for me, and this is just me being honest, mm-hmm. is let's say I'm just now meeting or talking to a person. And if the 
let's say she says like, oh, you remind me of him. You're acting just da-da-da. You're acting a son. That is oh, a huge God. turnoff to me. Because I'm like, number one, you really screwed up with me now because now you're comparing me to him. I don't even know what he was like. And so you now you were putting me under a level just like that. And I just now, oh, I, we haven't even really got the things rolling. <laughs> and See, that's supposed to be a day. How to say it again? You, the connection. Any one on one? No, no. As it is, that's supposed to be like a no. We, you're never supposed to compare anybody to somebody else. You really, truly, shouldn't even bring up that person's name or attribute. At you all. No. If you're talking to your friends, yeah. If you're talking to your friends, okay. Okay, girl, fine. But like, if you're trying to get to know, not cool. That's not cool. Yeah, that's a huge turn off for me because, like, I had that's, a couple it times. It should be a turn off. Because I'm like, you know, sure I'm, I'm not even interested anymore because one of the things like that, that's a huge one. Or, I, I, you know, I'm or old school. I like to try to be romantic or try to do little things like the good morning thing. I want to, and I'm not going to lie, I'm probably a little bit more reserved than I should be because I feel like some of my things that I want to do is like unappreciated if I want to, or I may be seen as too clingy. And I'm like, oh, don't tell me that because I can give you all the time in the world. You won't hear a single word from me anymore. <laughs> and it's funny you say that because I've been told that. I was told that uh, trying to have the dating whole thing after being married for 10 years, trying to kind of put myself back out there. And a relationship that I was trying to have probably, I'm going to say about five years ago no i'm gonna say maybe four years ago maybe i was told because we came and we was like okay i think we would want you know let's let's go date let's try this whole relationship thing mutual agreement but i was told i was too clingy because i feel like we should at least talk every day and so communication <laughs> communication but i was considered to be too clingy and so I that made me question. That really that messed me up and it made me question um like what I what I believed in. Yeah, you know, I was like, I believe in communication. I was just like, but isn't that normal? But isn't that what people do? I mean it, it goes back to what you were saying. It's an interesting time and then the fact that I'm hearing it from you and of course that you're older, I'm like, is this just a I don't I mean honestly I don't like it because it's a lot of different things that comes with it because now it's, okay I'll just go ahead and just front and say it. to okay. me it seems like we're in a society that the gentleman the passionate uh, you know the happily ever after kind of love story to mm -hmm. nowadays it seems like more of a BS now people now this is just my personal experience mm. from what I seen from personal family, friends and people I see it's like they see love as fighting domestic violence and arguing. I'm like, and honestly, mm. I don't want to go through that. My, um, if I'm picking someone, I don't want to go through that. Like mm -hmm. I'd rather be alone with my damn dog in the house happily right. with my right. cup, of, cup of tea. <laughs> Right. And to put up with no, all that I day it. stress. I like, of course, I, mean, I, I, I want a partner, it. but still, no. It's sad, but it's 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 sad, but that, that it appears to be true. Now, I will say this: I read this book um, through a class I'm taking at church, and it's called the Spiritual Spiritually Healthy. Oh gosh, where is it? Um, being spiritually healthy, healthy and emotionally healthy. And it's talking about how your family of origin is plays a major part in how you view love and how you view life. Oh, I'm glad you said that because, like, and this is just me, like, being self-aware and watching everybody move. But I did have a moment where I pretty much thought to myself, and I'm glad you paid. I was like, I wonder if the the way that people view a relationship, a love, or whatever, is based on what their family values or, or how it their is. mother treated their father or how their father treated it their is. mother. Because like, if you were in a bad situation and you saw them constantly arguing and fighting and all that, 
that's probably how you're going to view love versus if you saw someone that was actually working together and building each uh-huh. other. That's how I like that one. The well, other one, they can keep that. <laughs> here's the thing. The, the book, the book is called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. It's talking about how to be how to show your emotions in every situation in life. And there's a part that talks about the family of origin. And it talks about how you, how your family, how you grew up and how your family viewed problems, situations, different things that came up, how they dealt with it. It's going to be how, not always, but more than likely, it's going to be you. You're going to carry that baggage with you to whatever relationship you're in, whether it's good or bad. You're going to carry that with you. And it's sad, but I look back on that now. And even with my late husband's family, I saw things that because I grew up a certain way, I grew up. It's a class. Yeah, it's a class. Well, here's the thing. I grew up, my parents separated when Mm -hmm. I was three. I recently Mm -hmm. found out that they were not divorced. They just separated. Well, we moved to a whole other state. Well, I grew up single parent home. Me and my, my brother, she was a teacher, worked hard, raised us, you know, did everything she could to make sure we had a comfortable life. Well, my late husband's family, two parent home, but they had issues and stuff going on in the way they dealt with their stuff was totally different than the way my family dealt with conflict or things. And, in, and for me, after I read that book and after thinking about reflecting and thinking about life, there were things that I saw in my husband, not to say that they're horrible people, but there were things that I saw in them early, in their family of origin, their family, that a red flag for me to say, hey, are you going to, for myself to, if, if I'm not going to be willing to address these issues with him, then I probably don't need to marry to the son of because the way I was brought up is we don't argue. We didn't fight. We didn't fuss. We didn't do some of the things. We, we, my mother, she, she, I don't know how she paid bills, but she made it happen. She didn't believe in having debt. She didn't believe in having bill collectors come to her. We went and paid bills manually. We, I remember going to the, the telephone company. I remember going to the bank where she got paid, and we would go around and pay bills, and then if there was money left, oh, she made sure. So, my, my late husband's family, they dealt with bills and life differently. So it was immediate class, but because I valued the relationship I had with him, I overlooked a lot. Instead of dealing with it head on or instead of saying, hey, you know, this is how I grew up. I don't think, I think we're going to clash because I'm like this, I grew up like this. And so when you have two different people come together, with two different backgrounds and two different mm. it, it's gonna be it, it, that's why and so for me that's why communication is so important yep and I, i'm a strong believer found that uh, communication is foundation and i always want to bring this up when it comes to relationship people get mad but this is also low-key why i probably want to get my master's in this but okay. uh in this textbook i don't know if you see sociology yes yeah, that's my it, master's. yeah. and i feel like Honestly, I feel like sociology is the entire world, no matter what you like, yeah. politics, religion, and all that. Mm-hmm. It's funny on the back of this textbook, and yeah, I kept my textbooks from college. So some of these textbooks, I, I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't let this go. That's and funny. like in the bubble, is it's like, it has illustration of a guy, and he was like, how does the social world shape me? Like, listen to what that said. Like, how does the social world sh- shape me? And there's like, how do I shape the world? It's just like thoughts like that, like really, like really transform you. And then like what you see as right and wrong, your moral values. I'm trying to skip this page real quick because there was like uh-huh. something in the beginning that had me think even more because all of this comes down to like the social science of how we react, you know, uh-huh. and to certain things of how we were raised because from the, mm-hmm. what our, from the grandparents, the religion's structure and all mm-hmm. that, that's mm-hmm. going to be your moral foundation of how you view the world or what's right that's and right. wrong. That's right. Because like some people, well, I can't find it, but some people view like all that violent kind of stuff as a way of being loyal. And some people like it more of a softer touch and things. 
But there if is you one. You grew up watching violence or watching your family fight. We you more than like not all the time, but I'm gonna get time, my baby dad. No, you're gonna have that you you're gonna have that same view. Why? Because that's all you know. Now it takes a special person though to try to make the effort to correct that. It takes a mentally healthy person. But they have to but and the thing is though, they have to want to willing to change. You have to want that. Because I that's seen, no, I, nothing that nobody's gonna tell you. I've seen one that. person who has been abused physically abused by the same but i guarantee they probably saw that all their life so when she messed with this person that was constantly she felt that was love and i was like y'all are constantly arguing and fighting and you complain about this person but and then you got away but you keep going back i'm like you're complaining about it but you keep going back to it and then you have someone but if that's how you grew up you see that as being normal I just, that ain't my damn normal. <laughs> they can keep it. I'm just saying, for some people, if that's how you grew up, for them, they don't know, they don't realize that that's unhealthy. In their mind, I grew up like that, mama did it, big mama did it. That's how they did it, so why is it any different for me? It ta- yeah. I'm telling you, it takes a mentally healthy person to realize that everything that you did or everything that was done, all that stuff wasn't the best. I believe in my heart that 99% of the time, our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, they did what they did. But I think, especially my generation and maybe the generation right before me, I feel like we should be the ones instilling into our children. My children are young, but people, most people my age, because I'm 50, most people my age, they have children in their probably 20s right now. Hmm. I started late. I started late. But um, it's up to us, it's up to my generation to help their children and up to me to help my children try to be healthy, mentally healthy. And I think that's the part where we miss out because, again, it's up to us. If we're not instilling this in our kids, who's going to instill this? Who's Media, going to help TV, them? entertainment, exactly. songs, so and all that. Exactly. So what they see. If we're not having these dialogues and these conversations, and most people, a lot, I'm going to say most, I'll say a lot of people are not. So if we're not having these conversations, they're viewing life based on what they see on Instagram. And they're viewing life based on what they see on other social media outlets. They're basing life what they see the Instagram stars, rap stars, whoever, celebrities. And is that realistic for your life? Probably not. But they're doing what they know to do because guess what? If we don't tell them or talk to them, then what are they, you know? So I, I just think we have to be responsible as a community to um, have conversations, talk to our kids, talk to our families. You know, I talk to my kids, and my mother talked to us. Don't get me wrong, but my mother was more conservative. So for me, there are certain things I'm conservative with, but for the most part, if my kids want to talk to me about anything, and I, I preface that, I was like, anything you need to talk to me, you want to talk to me about, I want them to talk to me because they're going to get it. Either they're going to get it from me, they're going to get it from somebody out at school. They're going to get it from somebody wherever. So they're going to hear it. So I would prefer that they hear it from me. And I, I'm open. I will talk about, you know, sex with them. I'll talk about what it means to do this, what it means to do that. Is that something you want to do? I mean, we have these dialogues and conversations. And I'm glad that they feel comfortable enough to ask me and to talk about it with me. But we, it's up to us to that dialogue. Mm-hmm. Have open conversations, talk about mental health, talk about what, what healthy relationships look like. And if we don't talk about it, who, who, who's going to do that? Yep, yep, well said, well said. So there's a lot of juicy information in there, and I can see the conversation going on from there. Or as one person would say, <laughs> it had me laughing, but he made a point. Uh, he was like, well, I hate to tell you this, but 
sometimes your parents can fuck you up. I was like, what? Well, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But see, but here's the thing. Either the parents down the line are going to realize that and help you with that, or you got to see that, hey, that's a man now. That's screwed up. I, that's, that's not normal. You know, that's not how it's supposed to be. Somewhere you got to realize that it's not good. It's not healthy. It's not good. And I think when it goes to back to relationships, if this is what you feel is healthy, then here I come, bibbity bopping, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay. And then you say something to me, and it's just like, wait a minute. Is that how you communicate? Yeah. That's what you oh, that's what I, oh, well, no. And so then you get called bougie, or then you get called, oh, you think you're better than. Then, you know, and then yeah, and then it just goes <laughs> on from there. Like, no, I'm just not gonna allow you to treat me and talk to me any kind of way. I have standards. Yep, self respect and all that much more. Exactly. So, exactly. All right, so here we're gonna go for another like you can choose not to answer this or not. Like I said, it's okay. fun and casual and all that. All so right. so the sex life at Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, let me take a drink on that one. <laughs> All right. I think I'm ready. I don't know. I think I'm ready for this one. <laughs> All right. You good? I'm you good. Got, you got the Holy Spirit hitting you over there. You're like, catch my breath for a minute. Okay. Ooh. All right. <laughs> I told you we're gonna have fun. Hey, I'm, it's all good. It's all all right, good. so like I said, you have the right to choose or not to, but like, okay. how is that at this age? Let me get my drink. I'm trying to see what angle do I want to approach this 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 question and how I want to answer it. I'm going to say. That is very interesting because it's like a choice. And I say that because it's something like you choose to do or you choose not to do. Now, what's interesting is that many men my age, younger, older, um, they feel that they have to have, it's like they want to bait you in. But I'm going to say like, for lack of a better word. They want to bait you in. And instead of just saying, hey, this is what I want, they want to bait you in with all these other stuff that have nothing to do with anything. When in actuality, that's what they want. So, I, I just say it's it's an interesting time. Um, quarantine. <laughs> we're in quarantine, but you'd be surprised. Some people are willing to break the quarantine to do some things, do some strange for some change. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> people, hey, 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 and I'm like, <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. I, I, I'm just saying. I think it's just an interesting time because. Um, I, I'm going to tell you what I expected. I personally expected as you get older or mature that you're not casual with it. Um, but what I'm finding that is that people are really casual. They're more casual than I expected. And it's kind of like one of those things where I'm just like, wow. I mean, people in their fifties doing this shit. I mean, you in your fifties. They probably now? like, look, let me go ahead and like ride this ride out. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, it, it's it's a, it's amazing to me because I'm like, you're in your fifties. I mean, I know age is a, it's it's a, it's about maturity. I get that maturity level. I get that. But um, I just expected a lot different. Expect to have to fight people off because they want to have sex with the first night. I, I didn't expect that. You know, the first time they meet you, ooh, they look at that, yeah, I ain't up and down like this to me. I, I, I personally didn't expect that. 
but I've learned that people we're attracted to the physical first. I get, um, but I also believe that. I would appreciate the old school style. You know, I would appreciate being courted, as they say. I would appreciate mm -hmm. going on a date. I would appreciate, and I've, I've been on a couple of dates. Um, I've dated guys that more than one date with a guy that was pretty cool. But what I'm finding is that after you go on these dates, and hey, they're expecting something in exchange for these dates. That's more or less the now times. I was told, and I was told this by a guy. He told me, it was just a guy friend, he said, you got a wife going on too many dates with this guy. This one guy, cool guy, a little bit younger than me, cool, we went to a couple places, went to a nice restaurant. We went on like three dates, I'm gonna say three. The, my friend told me, he said on that third day, after that third day, he don't want to. This sound like that I'm movie. I'm telling you. By Steve Harvey, I think. He said, on that, by that third day, he said, I'm telling you. He said, Mark, he said, tell me if I'm wrong. And I was like, oh, hey, you know, ain't nobody, going, ain't nobody doing that. What you talking about? Man, after that third day, he was, he was, he was, he was about that life. And I was just like, so, because we've been on these three days, now I, this is something like you expecting. I, I mean, I don't know. It just to me, I feel like I'm, I mean, what people do. I mean, as a, as a as a Christian person, we're not supposed to do that, of course. But I also feel like as a human being, things happen. We do things. Um, but I also feel like if I'm going to do something, I want it to be now. I don't want it to be like, oh, Poor, what? So I expected it. Yeah, he didn't buy me three meals, so now I got to no, no. I just feel like to me, it's just like, why? If it doesn't go, I don't feel, you know, it's just, that's not me. I mean, I mean that, that may be a, <laughs> like the time. Well, me personally, I like to go to natural flow because... I feel like sometimes I can for the other person like expect it can probably be a turn off. I feel it, it can is. be. Yeah. It is a turn off. And for me, I was just like, he was a cool guy, the great conversation. But after that third day, in the way he he was just like, Hey, you know, calm down, they say, you know, we you know. It was just a turn off for me. It was a turn off because even if I wanted to kiss him or even if I wanted to hold hands with him, I didn't anymore because of the way he came at me like I was a like I was dessert. So yeah. it was a turn off. It was just it was just a turn off. And I felt like if it's not gonna be natural, again, should we even be doing it? No. But the but the reality It is that we're human and so if you're going to do that if you're gonna you know if we're gonna go in like that then be natural so let it be something that's you know i don't i don't know but it, it was just a turn off for me and it felt like it felt like i've done these things you owe me this i i didn't like that yeah. i didn't like that yeah and it great. made me feel some type of way of this guys and, and i went back to my friend and told me about it and I was just like, but why do y'all, I mean, he said because men feel like if you don't, then you, they're being used. And I'm like, okay, so when I go out next time, I buy my own food. I'm, See, I, mean, I think in, whew, I, I have a feeling like future interviews is going to be a common thing that people bring it up. But honestly, okay. like when it came, like how he responded, me, I don't like it when someone well, anyone says this, even if it comes from me or any, even guys, mm -hmm. is, you know, men are supposed to, or, you know, women are supposed to. Mm -hmm. I don't like the way that's said or structured. Because it generalizes, and then it's like you expect the, all the genders of that to 
act the same way. Me, I'm like, and I, I and I corrected someone there, like, you do have a point. And I said, like, because this person was like, well, you know, women like this. And I was like, no, you want that. Right. Let's be honest about it. Right. And there's nothing wrong right. with that because that's what you like. Right. But everything that you like does not mean somebody else is going to like. But see, but that ties into getting to know the person. See, we put people in category. We put people in, oh, well, this person likes this. So because that person likes this, well, then let me do the same thing with this person. That means you're not going to know me. Because if you truly get to know me and you understand who I am, you're not going to approach me like you would somebody else. You're going to approach me differently. Why? Because I'm I'm different. I'm going to... You need to approach me different. Not that I'm better than him. Not that I think I'm better than him. Not that I have all these athletes. That's not it. Everybody should be approached differently. I'm not going to approach people. Whether it's guys or women that I work with, whoever I'm with, I'm going to approach each person different. Why? Because each person is, is going to be different. So I just think, to me, is that we're doing it ourselves and people a disservice when we generalize. And we put people in the category. I said, well, all men. And this is what he told me. He said, you know, all, you know, guys, we expect stuff. And I was just like, if guys in general expect that after the third date or whatever, that women owe them something, I said, then that's, just, I said, we're in a sad state right now. I said, because that, I said, and, uh, but, but here's, here's where I sympathize. I sympathize because if that is what women have done in the past and because they they made the guy feel like, okay, well, I'm going to take you out and I'm going, you know, if you've been, let, if guys have been led on like that, then that says something too. Yeah. I think, <laughs> and I think here's the thing. Someone told me this the other day. Men do what women allow them to do. And I believe that because, and vice versa as well, I'm not here to male bash or anything like that because I think we all have our stuff. But it makes so much sense because I let's say I meet you, we hit it off. There are certain things about you that I might check you and I might say, you know what, hey, Chris, I don't like this. When you did this, I don't like this. Well, your previous relationship that person that, that whatever that person might have been like okay well that's cool with me don't bother me but because they accepted that and i feel a little different about it then in your mind well she liked it why you don't like it what's your problem what's yeah your that's a turn off like that can be a huge exactly. turn off it goes back to what exactly. we were talking about earlier about comparing that which is a exactly. huge turn turn off to me oh exactly. so as we wrap this up i want to do i want to end with this one I think it, I, I think we should because okay. I think this is probably happens a lot. Okay. Could you try to see a nice way to say this? Oh Lord. Mm-hmm. Oh man. All right. So no, it, <laughs> you. I'm the one making the question. I'm gonna get drilled. I'm scared because <laughs> I'm, I'm. I gotta answer the question. All right. So could you still be with? I mean, could you still be friends with a person if they called you, let's say, I'm just going to throw this as this, let's say, if they say, like, not attractive, complaints about your weight or how you dress or like how you talk or where you're originally from and those kind of things. Like, after, let's say, if they, because, you know, nowadays people, instead of communicating like we were talking about, they uh-huh. will say all those issues in a text or something like that. Uh-huh. 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 Could you still be cool with a person after they just told you all that? And, and let's say you were open, like, why didn't you? I don't know. Like, but you, you get what I'm trying to say, right? Could I be cool with them as in being in a relationship with them, cool? Or just be cool with them as in just communicate? That and friends. After they just pretty much told you everything that's wrong with you. It's like to the point where sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it goes deeper where a per- that it's like who you are naturally, they don't, they don't like it. Does that make sense? So what would be the benefit of me being friends with that person? 
Ooh. I'm just asking. What if, okay, so like the way I view relationships, and again, I'm not an expert, I'm not a therapist, um, but as I've gotten older, for me, I view relationships like this. I'm not a user, I don't, I'm not an a opportunist, but I do feel that all of our lives are engaged be, or entangled because we have something to offer somebody. Um, so for example, the way we met, we met Grand Book Festival. Okay. We started talking why? Because we're both artists. So I connected with connect me from there. We did the podcast at the, at the uh, studio. So I feel like this in relationships, we should be getting what's the benefit. If you're not going to be beneficial to me, and I'm talking about, not just talking about men, I'm talking about women, I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about in general. Um, if we can't benefit each other, what's the point? What, what's, what's the point? I have people that I've had relationships with. Uh-oh. Can I can say you just keep going. It's going in now, but I can hear you. Keep I, going. I've had relationships with people that after I thought about it, I was like, what's, what's the benefit? What am I getting out of this relationship? Not that I'm trying to get money, but what is, is it benefiting uh, an intimate relationship or a friendship? Whatever it is, what is what am I getting out of it? And then by far, they out of it. If I can't be, you know, be who I need to be, if there's no ben there's no benefit um, about our friendship or relationship, why are we there? So why would I? Well, am I benefiting from being still being friends with that person? Yeah, and that's that really because I, I had to bring it up because I know quite a bit of people who said like like I can't. They were like, I can't, I don't feel like I can be myself around that person. And I was like, so why are you still hanging around that person? They said what? You went but, out. All right. So they were like, um, I, I don't feel like I can be myself around that person, even if they're just friends. And I was like, why are you still being around? Because if anything, I feel like you just, um, just a, it's like self-punishment to yourself. Yeah. Well, what's the benefit? What would be the point? If I can't be who I am or you. Then what's, what, what, I mean, if I have to feel like I can't show you who I truly am and be can, if it's too much for you, it's too much for you. We don't have to be around each other. Yeah. And so that's my is. What am I benefiting from that? Why would I need to still be friends with you? If you don't like me, you don't like the way I dress, you don't like the way my size, my shape. You don't like these things about me. And what, what do we, what do we need? Why do we even need to communicate? Makes sense. I'm not going. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't like. I said I don't have all the answers. I don't. You know. I'm not. I don't have. I have some experience, but I just for me. I've learned, and I've learned to um, think about life a little bit differently. Think about relationships and people and how I deal with people a little bit differently. Mm. Well, I mean, that's what it's all about, is like... And um, not to say, again, not to say I don't serve people. Huh? I'll go ahead, because I know the internet's probably... Finish off what you are saying? I was just saying, not that I don't say... I, I think I'm, again, better than people, or I think I'm... But... If it's not benefiting me, whether it's business wise or social wise or person, if we there's no benefit, what are we doing? And I think for a lot of people, they're friends with people. They hang around people and it's just like, okay, we are not trying to do better. Then what are we doing? We should be growing. We should be, and that's just with relationships, with friendships. We should all be trying to grow and do better. And if we're not, then what's our point? Very true. And there's been times where coming from my own personal experience where 
I've actually cut ties from people, let's say, because you, I'm like the inspirational, you know, I use my pain for like energy and all that much more. But like, there's been times where like, let's say if I say something to kind of encourage them, they'll be like, yeah, I don't see it or uh, whatever. I'm like, uh, right. and, they, and they don't fight. have to see it. You don't, they don't have to, you don't have, you have nothing to prove. And I think that's the part where we as people, we have to know who we are. We have to know the purpose and vision that we have on our lives because people, if it's up to other people, we'll never get to where we need to go. That's why we have to be careful of who we let in our ears and what we, you know, what we have going on because distractions come in different forms. Distractions come in different forms. People are distractions, places, and things. And it's funny because to me, right when I need to start like writing, because I'm working on an anthology with a group of women. Actually, I'm working on two. And it's like all kind of distractions come up when I'm trying to write. You know, and it's just like, okay, you know, I'm supposed to be trying to write right now, but then I got this person texting me or this this person is in my inbox. I'm like, what? You know, let me focus. And so that's why it's important to have focus. It's, it's important for us to focus on what we're supposed to be doing and don't get, don't get caught up. Well said, well said. Well, I believe this was a great fun uh, episode of Absolutely. Slice of Love. You know, a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> and there's going to be a lot more, probably even more topics to build. That's why I had to build this up because I feel like, you know, relationship is something that's always changing, always ongoing. You can never run out of topics. Everybody's situation is different. So I was like, mm-hmm. instead of everybody just being quiet and there's an elephant in the room or having all these secrets and things like that, I'm exposing them on the podcast for entertainment. <laughs> so let's, let's talk go. about this. That's <laughs> so, right. It's all learning, fun, and a lot of things I need to hear about, you know, to kind of give that person hope or let them learn. So that's what it's all about in entertainment. Absolutely. Cool. I'm down with it. I'm with it. <laughs> I'm so with it. We're going to end this thing out. Of course, if you're, it's your host, Chris Holmes, and I have my special guest with Valerie Johnson Reed. Awesome, muscle. And this is another episode of A Slice of Love. <laughs> all right, I'm gone. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>